exploring the mountains of the Pacific Northwest with Luna to finishing third place in the TC America Championship, season three has certainly been a time to remember. And in this episode, we make the spontaneous trek out to Silverthorne, Colorado to hit opening day of the 2022-2023 season at Arapahoe Basin. Welcome back to arguably the most anticipated day of season three. We drove about seven hours last night to Silver Throne, Colorado uh, to check out the opening day of Arapahoe Basin. It was kind of a spontaneous decision once we heard that they were opening. I was kind of going back and forth if I should go or not, and I just said, you know what? Screw it, why not? So I got in the car yesterday, got in here late last night around uh, midnight, and just slept at a little rest area outside Silver Throne. some snow here as we are climbing the hill to a basin. There's even a little bit of snow on the ground over there. There is quite literally only one run open it seems somewhere between a green and a blue, I would think. So nothing crazy going on today. I think the goal is to just get back on the edges, get back on a chairlift, just enjoy the mountains um, and take it for what it's worth and just celebrate opening day and the return of a new ski season. But these can be very dangerous conditions, very dangerous time of the season as well, because there are so many people on what is typically referred to the white ribbon of death or the white ribbon of joy, depending on um, half glass full or empty sort of attitude for opening day. But um, I really have no edges on my skis at all. So it's gonna be pretty brutal of a combination of just uh, trying to get down the mountain and with this sort of sleet, who knows what the conditions are gonna be like. But like I said, just stoked to be able to be out here. I love a basin um, and it's always rad that they kind of try to get open as early as they can every year. I'm keeping it rather light on the breakfast this morning. I'm just going with some turkey bacon and some eggs. I figured when we get hungry, we can just come back in. I don't foresee us staying out super, super long today. Try all right. I'm not even worried, but I can't hear the silence you describe. Don't be ashamed. We can't always leave this place and go where no one knows our names. So even though I do have my full Epic, it is not activated for this year. It's in the mail, I don't have it yet. So I need to go to the ticket office um, and hopefully they can activate my new pass, get my new pass, and we'll be good so to come go. with me. We could spend the weekend doing everything they said we'd never do. In their universe, we're just causing trouble, but nothing Great can sport. hurt. First chair of the season for me. Nice. Have you guys went up yet? Yeah, it's not, yeah. It's not, oh, yeah. It's not bad. Yeah, it's sweet. For first day? Hold on. Right yeah, right? Windows down, 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 down. a good one, guys. First time touching snow this year. It's a matter of just getting warmed up all around in terms of my gear, remembering how to do all this, so it's going to take it easy. Looks like the snow is picking back up again. Feels good to be out. All right, here we go. Low viz. Any turn as we can. Bad. Some grip. 
no edge on these things. We gotta note the snow here. That's not bad. That dude throwing a three in front. Oh yeah, feels good. Oh ho! Forget how good this feels sometimes. First run. Pretty fun. First run of the year. Not too bad. I do feel like Bambi a little bit. And like I mentioned, I have no edges on these skis. I forgot just how dull they were from last season. So when I get on stuff like this, just kind of have to work my way, work my knees to make it work. But I tried the right side last time. I'm going to try the left side. I think the secret is staying on the sides. Um, when you have this early season like that, the snow actually gets pushed down and it's quite nice. So I'm going to try the left side. The snow keeps coming down, so can't really ask for a better opening day than this. I just watched your Montec review a couple weeks ago too. Oh yeah. Yeah, so I got a, I got a whole fit now too. Yeah. Oh, you got one? Yeah. Hell yeah. I got dude. the uh, red and uh, red, but I didn't get the matching top. Okay. Just got the red, red bibs. Yeah. What are you right on, dude. You're just recording for today, right? Yeah, I'm just shooting a little time lapse. Yeah. You gotta find some way to make this interesting. Yeah, of course, it's a B-roll, so. right? Yeah. All right on, man. Yeah. Thanks we'll for saying you. hello, dude. Sure. Have we'll a good one. Out.
done probably about five or six runs now and it seems to just keep getting better and better the snow will come through then it will will stop but it just keeps like this nice thin little layer over the artificial snow but uh, certainly kind of still feeling like Bambi out there. I think it's a combination of the conditions, the skis, all that sort of stuff. But it does feel good just to get back on your edges, all that sort of stuff. And like I mentioned earlier, the strip really is kind of how you see opening day. The half glass empty, half full sort of sort of deal. You can either be, you know, white ribbon of death or the white ribbon of joy. And it seems like most people are just super stoked to be out here. Sun seems to be coming out and um, yeah, overall just really stoked on, on the day. and. Uh, we're out in the mountains getting snowed on, so how bad can it be? things in life that I never regret after I do it and that is one working out and two going for a ski day 100% worth it I somehow managed to stay out till two o'clock I think I skied about uh, four hours so totally a full day I was gonna come in for lunch but I just figured not to so eating a later lunch made a sandwich made some soup but just super stoked on that day like it kind of I was nervous going into it but it all just kind of worked out the way I had hopefully envisioned it to. So first day on snow is down and it feels good. Now one of the main features of Luna, my van that makes it viable for being able to ski, live in the winter, is the diesel heater that I put in and it's actually installed underneath the passenger seat and this is the vent. It is tapped into my fuel tank on the van so I don't ever need to add additional fuel or anything like that. It just pulls from, from an auxiliary port um, off the existing fuel tank. So right now it's blowing really, really hot air. But I went to run the heater when I was up at the mountain at A Basin and it's the first time the heater was not pushing any hot air. It was just like blowing ice cold air and I think the reason why I'm telling you this is because if there's other people out there who have this similar system, um, I was so lopsided, probably the most lopsided I've ever been, um, that what I'm thinking happened was the fuel pump just wasn't powerful enough to actually pull the fuel being that lopsided all the way up over the van underneath to where the heater was, if that makes sense. So there's a fuel pump that's drawing fuel from the fuel tank just like you would have any sort of engine and bringing it into the diesel heater. So I think if you're extremely unlevel like I was, I, I think that the fuel pump might just not be strong enough to actually get enough diesel fuel over here. So I drove down into Silverthorne because I was like really concerned um, that this wasn't working for some reason and I'm on level ground and it's blowing as it should so I'm trying to edit a video and see just how well this laptop can hold up to the rigors of what is the ski vlogs GoPro max footage EOS R6 footage Hero 10 footage and I want to see if this computer is even able to handle all of that so like I mentioned earlier with the skiing this whole trip in and of itself is a little bit of an experiment um, because I am planning on going full time in the van skiing. So I'm trying to see what is gonna work, what isn't gonna work. And obviously a big thing is being able to have a computer that can handle um, the edits that we traditionally put out.
it is rather difficult to find a place to legally sleep for the night in Silverthorne and Frisco, but there is this one rest area right across from Lake Dillon um, that obviously has a lot of trucks and there's just a few s passenger stalls here. Um, looks like I'm the only one here tonight. Just to show you guys what we're working with, the highway, which is like a four lane highway, is right below me, Lake Dillon, and then surrounded by 18 wheelers. So yeah, it's not always uh, extravagant campsites and stuff, especially in the winter, but this will just have to work for tonight. And now it's time to get ready for bed. You guys better believe the yogurts are back for ski season. Got the Chobani Flip, Salted Caramel Crunch, and Mint Chocolate Chip to end the night. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Take it easy fam, I'll see all of you guys in the next episode. Don't forget about the live stream on Wednesday, and I'll see you later. Peace out. Oh,